Hey, welcome back. So where I've left off is I pretty much have everything assembled, most things. The new Y assembly, it runs on the side instead of the top. That's all done. Uh, we got some new paint on there. Paint actually looks a little brighter than that paint. Uh, this paint was, this, uh, where's my paint? This stuff here. This was giving me some problems with uh, um, I don't know what you call it, cracking, overspray. Um, I also, like I painted this stuff and it was really cold outside, so I wonder if that kind of had an effect on it. But I had to go back and, you know, clean up some of the areas to get rid of that overspray cracking and stuff. And that's all taken care of. Um, spindle and everything's back on. This is moving nice. The, uh, the Y assemblies, they also move really well. Except right now, like I can backspin it right now. Backspinning the motors and and all that, but it is a little tight. So when I'm when I was tightening all this down, um, I have to I have to loosen all that and check that out. Um, what I might have to do is some of these bolts, like like these ones here, make these a little bigger, and then also the ones that go through here, just to give it a little bit more ability to like self adjust and everything when when everything's together instead of trying to bind because one of these Y assemblies is currently binding I don't know which one though when I built these Y assemblies what I did was I took off this entire tube and built this whole thing as just one unit and then that way I could get the alignment of everything really good so I think uh, the slight binding I'm having is due to like I just kind of assembled all uh, the riser and like the plate that rests underneath back on. I think I just have to loosen all the bolts and kind of mess around with the, trying to get the smoothness coming back. So yeah. Um, but all, yeah, it feels super rigid now. Like, yeah, like it feels very good. Um, it is still hollow. So, and a lot of bolts, like there's, 16 bolts, I believe. Some down there. Bunch on the back. And then obviously this has just lots of bolts everywhere. But yeah, everything's pretty good. Um, I painted the this track holder and also the pieces up there. So this is on and kind of, you know, done and final and stuff. That's what they look like down there. The uh, other side, because all this is different and it sticks out more, I, before I had this track running like where the motor is, but unfortunately I can't do that. So, um, yeah, I gotta paint this, but I'll probably modify it. So if I just hold this in place, it's gonna go something like that. So I think that could work. And let me see if I can get that more. I was thinking about whether or not I should try and mount it that way. It's just that it doesn't give me a lot of space. Yeah, back up a bit. All right, that just kind of held in place like that. Um, I don't know. I don't know if that's gonna work. It it just feels like it's uh, it's gonna be running really close to the gantry riser, and you know, quite possibly could be rubbing on that. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what to do about this. I wonder if I could run it upside down and mount it to the frame, and you know, come down and something like that. I don't know if that's you know, these things kind of work by gravity, so I'm not sure if that would work. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of where things are now. It's just kind of putting the little small things together. Um, I don't have the X ball screw in there because I'm, you know, until until the uh, cable chain and everything is on, um, you know, like I might have to take the whole thing off again. So yeah, when, when that's all done, um, this one, this mount here, 
Yeah, these other mats, they work pretty good. The plastic ones, little spacers. Uh, this one here is, uh, it's only got the two bolts, but I've drilled holes here as well. And what I intend to do is make a, uh, make this whole piece like a one piece thing. And, and then just have it, you know, lots of bolts. So this thing is not really, um, you know, possibility of flexing and stuff. Uh, but overall, like they're they're pretty rigid, and I think they're gonna hold up pretty good. If it's anything like the rest of the 3D print stuff I've been using, I just stuck a clamp on there just to kind of hold it in place. But uh, yeah, let me know if uh, you have any better ideas than or alternatives. Maybe some examples of, of what other people have done in in a case like this, like the. Like I don't get a lot of space left. See I'm, I'm rubbing on this here and then also like I'm close there. So I don't think in this configuration it's going to work. But definitely for the X right over there, like that works really good. So I'm not going to change that and just I need to figure out what to do about the uh, Y. Some other loose ends I gotta figure out are limit switches on Y. Uh, because before, like I had the limit set switch in line with uh, the ball, the ball screw and everything. And it was just not really that great. It would, it would actually like come and uh, sense off the uh, bearing carriages. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna do something different. Uh, mount the limit switch. Uh, where's one? Right there. So I'm going to have it in the facing down direction, that way chips don't uh, do anything with it. And I might I might see if I can put it in here somewhere. That'd be kind of nice. Maybe I can have it so as it goes, it'll trigger off this piece of, I think this is steel. I'm not sure. But yeah, if it triggers off that, that would be a really clean way of doing it. Uh, but yeah, other little, yeah, just like loose ends like that, that's what i am uh, got to work on next. The gantry risers with the dual carriages and, you know, switching everything over to the side. I think that was all a really good success. This whole thing, like, yeah, like it, it feels a lot more rigid than it was. Like, yeah. What I'll, what I'll do at some point is uh, try and measure the deflection because I think I have that... Uh, in a previous video of how much the uh, deflection here used to be. So it'll be nice to compare that to how it is now. When I'm finished making the skirt for the uh, chip pan, that's going to go over this stuff. Uh, what I'll probably do with the leftover is stainless steel. Like here's a, you know, this is, this is 18 gauge, it's pretty rigid. It's actually very rigid. Um, what I, what would be nice is uh, to use some of it as like a barrier here and that way I can keep all the chips and everything off the linear assembly and I think that would work out really good. The other option is to use some PC, some polycarbonate. And, uh, I might try that. I always have bad luck with that stuff. It always cracks on me like that. Basically anything up here, everything's literally all cracked. <coughs> but yeah, some thoughts to think about uh, on the video here and uh, I'll see you in the next video.